Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by my channel, Tony's LPs are us. Today we're going to do a little segment, but it's a sad one. And I have my, uh, my pal Sean here, more of a Grateful Dead guy than I am, and I guess you know what I'm talking about now. Phil Lesh passed away. Sad occasion, just found out a few hours ago. So stay tuned, we're going to talk about his music, show us a rare post that we picked up at a concert, and a few of his albums. Thanks again. See you in a minute. Okay, we are back. Tony's LPs are us. Thanks again for stopping by. I got my son Sean here, who is a dead aficionado. I don't know where he got it from because I didn't really listen to a lot of dead. I have no dead shirts. Don't wear anything dead. He got this uh, dead and co. I got dead and co on City Field with Big John. Got some dead up. And uh, we're just going to do yeah. a beer, a little. IPA from New York where Phil performed quite a bit. Actually, you saw him in New York, right? Yeah. Not too long ago. Cheers, Cheers. to Phil. Phil. And we Lush. have the Elvis Studio E. We're going to dim the light so the light will not be on during this broadcast. I would commence with dimming of the light in honor. Take over? I'll take over. Yeah, so he mentioned upstate New York. The one time I saw Phil Lection Friends was for Halloween in the Capitol Theater up in uh, Port Chester, New York. They do something called Philoween. I'm not sure how many times they did it, but you it was... went last year, Yeah, it went two years ago. They they were doing it maybe since like 2020, 2019. They fell out on 2020, but a cool poster to start off with, which is a great memory I have of seeing Phil. Watch out with as, this. As many of you others, my girlfriend oh. and I went, and we dressed up as... Um, John and Paul wow. from the rooftop sessions. Check it out. Dude. For Let It Be. But this is cool. Oh, you have Great to frame poster. This. So this is October 28, 29, and 31st. 30, wow, it's almost an anniversary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Capitol Theater, Port yep. Chester. Yeah, so Phil Halloween was a cool little um, tradition he was doing with Phil Lesh and Friends, which I think just speaks to his legacy of, of playing with different artists. And continuing, as we say, uh, keeping the music alive, the music never stops. Right. And just for some technicalities, as far as his date of birth, March 15th, 1940. So pre-war. Of course, he died today, 10-25, 2024. Played bass, as you know. Was an original founding member. Played for them with, for about 30 years, 34 years. If right. you count 65 to 95, he had, 30 He had years. a melodic style of bass, and I think he learned bass because Jerry Garcia said to him, why don't you play bass and come to my band? Because yep. he didn't play bass, but of he course, bass. he was a savant. As Sean could play many instruments. I could. I can't I, hold... I could just a, play guitar. I couldn't hold a tune <laughs> if, I, if it had a handle. Right. So, <laughs> right, right. But he drew from classical, free jazz, avant-garde jazz, avant-garde pop, um, yeah, and he was a violin player, so he did piano, uh, wrote, he sung harmonies. I think he had a problem harmonies, with his voice. Yeah, eventually he stopped singing because his voice started he, from not from a lack of a proper singing technique. He needed to take a step back because he was damaging his voice, the vocal cords with some irrevocable. That's damage. what I read. So that's, that's what I read. So we're just gonna yeah. we just want to say rest in peace, and yeah. we and we met, we're gonna miss him. Definitely. There's only what three members left. Yeah, so we just have Bobby, we got Mickey and Billy. That's Check it. this out. That's this is it. cool, right? We got the patch. Some cool stuff. We got, we got a little got bit of the room. gear. This is some rare stuff. But it's a sad day, you know, we just found out a few hours ago, and um, it was a little unexpected. My phone exploded because of the channel. People reach out to me, and I was yeah. surprised. A few people that were not into the Grateful Dead don't even know what the Grateful Dead, they, they spell the Grateful Dead wrong if they right. spelt it. <laughs> and uh, they're the ones telling me, because I was watching... TV, I was thinking about doing another video tonight, which I'm probably going to do tomorrow morning, so stay tuned for that. Man. And I want to thank everyone for subbing. If you haven't subbed, uh, here's a great time to do it. We have uh, Shawnee here. So uh, that's that. that's my spiel, but yep. I really appreciate it. So, Sean, take it away. Yeah, you know, it's uh, as excited as we are. We always love being on the air with you guys and sharing our passion for the tunes. It's, right. it's sad. For the you know, vinyl. It's, not, it's not a good day. I mean, a lot of people... We're looking forward to GD60. A lot of rumblings on the interwebs, on Reddit. Uh, obviously now, that's probably not really happening. Um, unless the other surviving members get together and, and decide to do a tribute. So, in 
couple years ago in 2015, they did GD50. Which do you mean, Grateful Dead? Grateful Dead, Dead GD50 reunion tour, which was really big, fare thee well. So a lot of people were hoping for GD60. But, you know, um, the music, as we always say in the Dead community, never stops. It grows. Um, it keeps morphing. And, it, and what Phil always said and all the other band members is it's a legacy. And, you know, we make the music our own and we continue to let the music live. So that's really... You Very know, nice. it's a sad day, but it's also a day nice to celebrate. Sentiment. Nice right? sentiment. So we'll celebrate the legacy here with some OG records that Tila has in the archives. Formerly known as Ties Up, These Are Us. So we got Working Man's Dead, you know, a, a classic from them. Got a lot of people into the dead with more accessible tunes. Um, you know, Cumberland Blues is a big is a big fill one because the, the song starts off with that bass jam. And he plays the and he's the bass man. He's ripping it up. So, wow. wow. So Cumberland Blues on this one. If you want to get a little fill taste, check it out. Also Europe seventy two tour. A lot of good fill bombs as they call it. Original editor, of course, from the collection. I don't know yeah. if this is a green. Let's check Green uh, Warner. Warner. It yes. Is. Green Warner. Oh, uh, this is sick. nice. And we say it's nice, it's near mint. It we don't it. call anything open mint, but it's near mint, and near I don't really say uh you know, I I play this. It sounds it sounds near mint. So it's great, but that's a good. Um, and you also get a lot of those Phil harmonies going on, um, beginning with Working Man's Dead. And what year is this? Sixty seven. Ah, sixty nine. Sixty nine. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and then I think. Um, and then this is seventy. Okay. Check double check. Let's double check. We we always like to uh-huh. double check our uh, numbers. Well, sometimes so there's no date. 70. 70. So they're both 70. And what's the mouse again? Mouse Studios. That's uh, Stanley Mouse. The yeah, there you go. Yeah. Just show that up front. Yeah. Great cover. Great cover. And it has a texture. It's like a matted feel. So this is, uh, the, even the jacket's in near mint condition. Yeah, so we kept it's great. it kept it for a long time. So you time. got Working Men's Dead, and then you got American Beauty. Um, another great, great GD record. But it, the reason why we pulled this one is because you have Box of Rain, which is uh, which is another Phil Lesh song. Vocals by Phil Lesh. Uh, lyrics written by Phil Lesh. And I believe the story is when he was writing the song with Hunter, his father was actually in the hospital and was like sick and dying. So it's got a little bit of that sad feel. To a little it. sentimental. So Box of Rain's a big fill one. See if there's anything else on here. I think that was the main one. So definitely check out Box of Rain to celebrate Phil. But his bass drove the, the band, and he actually did, He's I big. think, like back and forth with the organ players. Yep. He did a lot of stuff. So And I guess he got along good with the drummers, Yep. the two drummers. Yep. It must be difficult to be a bass player it's gotta be with tough. two rhythm drummers. Like, how do you keep the beat? I think the way it worked is because Phil's unorthodox approach to the bass. Because he was self-taught. He was self-taught, and he, and he had more of a melodic style. Could he so. read music? Yeah, yeah, he he's could classically read. trained. So he could he could sight read. He could he could sight read classically trained. Oh, all right. Um, One of my favorites here. This is Tone's favorite from the Mars Hotel. I actually thought this was from Mars when I young he, when I bought this album. The notorious story for him is he always thought it was a live album. Yeah, I thought, yeah. he actually thought it was yeah, live, yeah. which is good, which is a testament. Well, I bought this because I wasn't a I wasn't a Deadhead. People I worked with at the record store. They loved the dead. They would. They even loved the Green Dirt Band. Uh, Circle would be unbroken, all that stuff. But yeah. I love this cover. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is an OG. They've all been reissued a million times. Yeah. This has the custom label. Mouse Kelly, another Stanley. Beautiful Mouse. label. Hopton Kelly. There. So. Uh, but the reason we pull this one is because you got um, Pride of Cucamonga, which is a another Phil Lesh tune sung by Phil, written by with his. Um, partner from the Palo Alto scene in the Bay Area. Peterson? Peterson, Bobby Pe- How'd you know that? <laughs> See, that's pretty good. I, I read some things. Poet Bobby Peterson, who was his buddy. And uh, one of the older guys in the scene was Peterson. And as you know, Phil's one of the older members of the dead. And we also have on here Unbroken Chain. So that's, right, that's so a big... A two. That's a really big that's Phil two. song, too. Um, really, really cool effects on it too, on the studio version with like the synthesizer that they're using. And what was the reason he left the band? Who? Phil. Just only, well, re- really Vocals just, or... just, just once, um, 
once Jerry died, they all just kind of did oh, their own thing. Right. So, I mean, right. never really left, but okay. stopped singing because of the vocals. Let me take this out. This is in... Then uh, you got Terrapin, which we pulled. Still in Shrink. Wow, that's cool. There you go. So we pulled Terrapin because, um, you know, Phil's big on the instrumental suites, and you have a lot of that instrumentation on the Terrapin t Station suite. And he uh, had it, his clubhouse was called Terrapin, the Terrapin Clubhouse. If you go on YouTube, there's a lot of good new stuff on there you should still check out with him playing with some uh, younger artists. A guy I really like, Daniel Donato in Cosmic Country. Uh, the guitarist Daniel Donato was on there recently. Really cool jams. Really? It's like his studio. Oh, I, heard, in, I think in, uh, Don uh, has yeah. something by him. Yeah, it's yeah. cool. Oh, does he? I think yeah, so. Yeah, I think yeah think they're so, sweet. Yeah. But uh, but that's another part of the legacy to check out. You know, we got the younger stuff, middle years, and now his uh, twilight years. But Terrapin Clubhouse is cool. Go on YouTube and check it out to celebrate Phil's legacy, not only past but and present. Let's, let's check out the label. It's a prerequisite. Yeah, what do we this have? Has it's a, a Reist, uh, I believe. This label. has a dedicated inner. Oh, that's cool. Custom inner. We One call of my it. favorite dead pictures. That skull. Oh, yeah, bone. And, and it's actually inverted. So yeah, I guess people, if you hold it up to a mirror, mm. it actually translates. Oh yeah, that's cool. Right. This is Arista, so it's just an Arista, and these are near mint. I don't really play a lot of dead. I never, I never let my records out, so they weren't at a lot of dead parties. No one rolled any bones in them. Right. No bones. As far as, on as, as, far as I know, There's no leftover grass. No here. residue. No rest. But this is a sad time because all our guys are passing away it's every true. day. I know. Well, Chris Christofferson. Right. And yeah. then the writer for the Eagles. Right. And he did some stuff with Bob Weir. Oh, okay. Yeah, they were pretty so tight. So there's a connection. So there's a connection. And next we got going chronologically. Classic, classic. Blues for Allah. Classic. Great, great, great album. So the reason we pull this one to celebrate old... Old Phil. And we could see Phil. I don't know which one Phil is. Control. Let's see. What Trump would know. Yeah, I guess I guess I guess that's supposed yeah, it must to be, be him. Phil, yeah. It doesn't really look like yeah, him. Yeah. It's kinda creepy. It's a wood carving of some kind. Kinda creepy there. But we pull this because you got a lot of the again, the instrumentation suite of, you know, King Solomon's Marble, Stronger Than Dirt. You got Sage and Spirit, Blues for Allah, Sandcastles and Glass camels, um, unusual occurrences in the desert. All that is very Phil driven with the um, instrumentation and how it's uh, no lyrics. So Phil was oh, Phil was big right. on a lot of the orchestration, the jamming, the jamming. He he saw music more wow. as an evolving jam than, than just the song itself. Nice custom yeah, label. It's a good label. We like that one, with the jester, and with the uh, side one, side two. Trying to get it, look at that, trying to get it in between, it's like a, a eclipse. Yeah, yeah, get it in there. Yeah, right, look at that, that's cool. Eclipse of the so, sun. Yeah. Phil would like that. Phil would like that. So, um, wow. A lot, a lot of great, I mean, the legacy is so deep, you know. We're just giving you some points maybe to celebrate this weekend. Oh, here, hat, wait, excuse me, this oh, yeah, has a, have. a lyric sheet. Wow. Which is, uh. What's on the back? How's it written? Um. It's in uh, Arabic. Arabic, it's yeah. In Arabic. That's cool. I never Blues knew that. Allah. Did you well, ever notice people, that? They don't have Most this. people don't have the they inner. They don't have the rec. No. The, the, the relic. But, well, the new ones won't have the inner, I don't think. Yeah. But that's in uh, Arabic, so. They were ahead of their time. Absolutely. Yeah. Like this, the Zeppelin got into it. Uh, always. You know, they always pushed the envelope. Yep. But they were the biggest, I would say, the biggest live band ever. Yep, I right, would say right. so. 30 years nonstop. I forget the number for how many live shows, but it's out there. It's, it's, it's up there and out there. And then we just pulled uh, in, in the Dark, you know, one of their later records that was a big hit with Touch of Grey, Hell in a Bucket. Um, you know, West LA Fadeaway has a really great fill, bass kind of, like, you know, jam going with it. You know, some great tunes here to go check out check out as well but you know we, we lost a big guy today it's sad it's sad. sad yeah and you were hoping for a reunion we were hoping yeah it probably we would have happened probably would have happened but wow. so that's know, it man. so keep rocking we really appreciate it if you haven't yeah cheers. cheers cheers thanks sean for stopping cheers. by thanks sean for having over, me on the channel especially for this and i said this has to be we have to put this out early because we want to honor him we try to do to announcements early and we try you know a lot of people still don't know yeah. Uh, even though you know you're on social media, it's not gonna. 
I saw something on, on Channel 4 NBC News before. Right, right. It was literally a 15-minute spot that Phil Lesh just passed away. Yeah. I go, are you crazy. kidding me? Crazy. Are you kidding me? 15, min 15 seconds? And I believe in the dead and were just... Quick, and I don't even think he would... I think they showed a clip where he wasn't even playing at that point. <laughs> but that's <laughs> typical, so... I think, And I think the Grateful Dead just got inducted with some music thing, right? Some, like, uh... My songwriting, maybe? Something like that. Uh, look, All right. But, you know, just showing again the, the legacy keeps rocking. All right, and, well. And we'll keep it going and, and you know. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks. We'll talk to you later. Much love uh, to Phil's family. Yeah, just a nice uh, little tribute, so I hope you like it. And Phil's son does music, too. They should check that out. What's he, his son's music? Really Graham Jr.? Lesh. Graham, wow. Graham Lesh. He's got some really cool stuff. So, I mean, So, you what's know, he about, 50? Gotta be, Probably right? yeah, 40s. Yeah, 40s, yeah. 40s, yeah. yeah, somewhere around there. He has um he has a legacy. It's all it's all genetics, the talent that it's comes there. from these people. They were they were they could have been a, a jazz fusion band. They could have you know they had it's jazz basically, people. That was them. They had uh, trumpet players. I forget. That was them. Uh, just famous people. Brantford, Marsalis. Yeah, Marsalis. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 We're good. We're He's good. good. I can't remember. All right. Well, all right. Well, talk to you later. Off. Signing off. Ciao.